Hey guys, welcome to another Photoshop tutorial. In today's tutorial, I'm going to be walking you through the creation of Avangard as well as using non standard brushes in your work. So let's go ahead and get started with this. First thing I did was set up my document. I brought up the size there for you to see. That's usually what I use for a lot of my work. It's just a really nice ratio. Plus, you can use it for your desktop background, which is always nice. First thing I'm doing is setting up the color plate for the rest of the image. And this just helps me set the tone with all the colors I'm going to use. I want this night sky but not completely dark. And there's going to be a lot of light coming off of the city. And I really had no idea how things were going to look at this point. All this was just kind of painted on the spot. I didn't really plan it out. So I'm, I'm creating a gradient for the sky. Go from gray on the horizon to a brighter blue and then a darker blue towards the top. And things get gray on the horizon because you're looking through a lot more air. Now that's, that's atmospheric perspective coming into play. It's kind of setting up my layers, trying to decide what I want to do. And I have this huge thing of brushes here. And these are just things I've collected over time. And I'm trying to figure out what I want to do with this. So I'm just playing with the different brushes, adjusting their settings. Adjusting the spacing, going in, size jitter. Setting the color down to a dark color because the stuff in the foreground I do want to be silhouetted, mostly. Most of the stuff just, it didn't look the way I wanted it to. It's very messy. But here I go, I started just basically throwing in random shapes from these brushes, just trying different things to see what'll stick. And in something like this, when you're using non-standard shapes, you can just play around with them for a while. You might be surprised at what comes up. I'm just laying down different little shapes and lines to create visual interest. And the nice thing about using these kind of brushes with a lot of detail on them is that usually in the final image you'll retain some of that detail and the chaoticness of your strokes. And it just helps to add things that you might not have been able to paint otherwise using, say, just a chalk brush. But the downside to these brushes is it, it can take you a while to find what you're looking for. And it's, it's really easy to create repetitive shapes. When you do use these kind of brushes, you'll see me go in quite often and paint over them or start with the eraser tool and remove some of them. And it just helps you to shape what you're looking for. And now I'm just quickly going through the perspective because that is going to be important in this scene. Usually any kind of urban scenes or scenes with buildings, you're going to want your perspective in it. Just because it, it is a lot more noticeable when it comes to structures. I'm just trying to adjust things in the foreground, adding different shapes. I know I'm using a technique that I've used before to extract images. I'm making these contrasted using the channels and going in with curves and basically just cutting this out then control I to invert it and there you go, I have this nice looking industrial shape to add on to this foreground building here. I wanted the city to be kind of a mix between futuristic and a, a very gritty look, a gritty industrial kind of city. And because I'm darkening down the piece that I cut out so much that I don't have to worry about getting a clean extraction for this. Later on you'll see that I do turn it to a complete silhouette and it loses all that original detail. And it's really up to you if you want to keep any of it or not. 
Sometimes they can just be great for using for shapes. Again, using the same extraction techniques. I'm trying to match the color to what else I've done there. Because even though I'm, I may end up silhouetting it, it still has to match the color that I originally started with. And you can do that easily with curves, just playing around with the, the different uh, channels and the curves to match it to what, what you've done. And I'm coming into this mid-ground layer here. And I, I said this in my last video, how I layer cities. It's often foreground, mid-ground, and background. And I did the same thing here. It just helps you keep things separate and make it easy to work on each particular area. If you have a particular building that's uh, very complicated, you might want to make it its own layer. Just using these different shapes and going in with the eraser again because I don't want those little things poking out at the top of the building there. So just by carving out the shape that I want and just keeping in mind with my perspective, I can really create some interesting shapes. The thing to take away from this is by using these non-standard brushes, erasing and painting over it, you can carve out just about anything that you want. I'm adding some taller structures over here and I'm playing with different brushes. You'll see me do it quite a lot in this piece. I just add a little grating pattern to that section there. Just something different and interesting, something that light can poke out through. And in this piece, quite a bit, I do have light poking out through different areas. You know, so say there's a bright light behind that particular section of building, it'll bloom outwards through the grate, and it just creates some nice variations. Just playing around with how I want this piece to stick out. I don't, I'm not quite sure what that what part of a building that would be, but it looks cool, and oftentimes if it looks cool, it works. You know, this isn't like engineering, where if it's not exactly a certain length, it's going to fall apart. Or it might, you know, depending. Just adding in this middle section here, taking another building and just trying to lay it around. Figure out what I want to do it with flipping it and squishing it down. And that's something to keep in mind with if you are using real photos is that you don't have to keep them exactly as they were. If you extract, say, this industrial building, you can squish it and stretch it till it looks like it's completely something else. And you'll see here I did completely turn it to a silhouette, so I didn't even need all that detail. And I imagine that this, this second layer would be kind of a long building going across from this foreground here, and then behind that it would break out more into more of the city setting. I just want to layer it to create depth in the image. So you have your foreground, which helps kind of bring your eye in towards the background. So you have this nice dark section, and then some visual interest, and then this brighter background. And here I'm trying to figure out the mega structure that I wanted to add. I did want a really big building somewhere in the city. And I'm just trying to forge out the shape again using non-standard brush, just rotating it and trying to shape out what could look good. Now I'm taking another brush and trying to adjust it with the angle that I want. So just using in the brush settings, the rotation and shape, you can get a brush to do what you want. Now just because a brush appears one way when you click on it doesn't mean that you can't completely manipulate it into another shape. I did something in a, another tutorial where 
I just took a round brush and flattened it and turned it into ripples. So the same thing applies to all these brushes that I'm using. Just adding on to the structure in the background. Shaping it using the eraser and brush together. Now I'm adding in some foreground buildings. Again, just using the eraser and the brush tool together. And you see I, I shaped out some spaces in there. And again, using these non-standard brushes to add on shapes. Something you might ask me is that how do you know it looks good? How do you know that this works? And that's something that I feel that comes with experience, with practice, and looking at other people's work. You know, you, you can find a lot of inspiration in other artists. You can look at things that they did and how they might have laid things out. And you can go, okay, how can I apply this to my own work? You can just try different things. You know, there's, there's never anything wrong with experimenting in your work, such as th this actual piece that I'm working on now is something that I've never attempted before and how I put it together. And the end result that I feel is I'm really happy with. Again, just following the perspective, adding in some standard buildings. So I did, I did want it to be a mix of grit and futuristic, so I went some of these nice big buildings with layers to them. This is very easy to do by taking the chalk brush that I use normally, turning it on its side so it's straight up and down, and then just holding shift to draw straight lines. And because I didn't use three-point perspective, I don't have to worry about buildings tilting at all. Just to keep things simpler for painting purposes. And here I am again, just using scattering and uh, the brush hardness with the normal scatter brush, along with color dynamics, dynamics, and just painting in some city lights and some roads where the cars might be. Just drawing little lines where they might be poking up through spare buildings and just clearing off the extra city lights from the horizon, cropping it down a little bit. I felt that there was just a little too much at the top there. And that's something that may happen when you're working, where you feel that you don't have enough room, or you have too much room, and you just want to cut a little bit to cut away some unnecessary space. And now I'm adding some bright lights and, and mist coming off the background. just to kind of help also highlight the center of the image. So you have these brighter lights coming out from the sides and back, and it just help draw, helps draw your eye in towards the middle. I'm adding some lights in front of the buildings here. I didn't want to use all of the same color the entire way, so I decided to switch it up and go with more of a purple color for this middle section here. So it just also helps separate this front area from the main city. Adding some searchlights, just a big soft brush. And I find that if you need to draw a straight line at an angle where you can't hold shift, you can just draw very quickly and it'll help create that straight line you're looking for. Just a quick stroke of the brush and it usually comes out straight. You might have to do it a few times. And here I just added a gradient to the top, a, d a dark bluish gray, and then set it to soft light. And it really helped darken down the top. So you have the light of the city coming up, and then it turns to the normal night. Now I'm using a technique that I used quite a lot in the last tutorial with taking lights from a building, setting it to color dodge, and adjusting it with curves. But I don't want to do that for this whole piece. I just wanted a few lights sticking on the building here. 
some of this industrial building has some lighting on top. And by adding this, I can also add uh, lighting effects to the front of the building here, because I didn't want them completely shrouded in black. I did want there to be some detail. I'm just very quickly pinning in some highlights and areas that might be bright enough to pick up light. Especially coming off of the lights there. And I'm just starting to shape out what this building might look like on top. And I'm adding highlights to many of the parts that stick out towards the top and sides. Just adding hints, hits of blue to show that there is light bouncing off, say from the background where you have this really bright light. And painting in some paneling here that might be at an angle going towards the rest of the roof. Just by doing that, you can see now on this building that there's a ramp here and it goes towards that and then up towards the rest of the building. Where, as before, it just looked like it could be flat. And that's, that's another thing. Just by adding little bits of detail, you can really shape how these buildings look, even if you don't go all out. Just adding some other lights to the canister there. And adding some base lights there, just very dull. And I really don't have to worry about any more detail there because the lights hitting the side of the, the canister there just, just give me enough to let me know what this what's going on here, where it starts, and a little bit more about the material. You'll see as I'm painting, I'm adding in color and then taking the color from the building and painting back over it to create shapes in it. Just adding some highlight to the poles there. Using the line tool can sometimes be helpful for you if you can't necessarily draw a straight line. And using your other techniques to do it might not help you. And so what I just did was just create a new layer draw it with the line tool, and then erase the edges to it so it tapers off. You know, I, I realized that I did break perspective a little bit on these foreground buildings, but something else to keep in mind with cities is that all the buildings shouldn't be at the same angle. You know, you're not going to look at any major city and see everything perfectly in a grid. You know, there, there's going to be buildings that sit slightly differently. And as long as it fits with everything else you're doing, so the top of that building there is still below the horizon line, and it still looks like it could be going along with the perspective, it, it'll work out. But for the most part, you don't want your perspective to be all over the place. You do want a good portion of it to be uh, properly done. So when you do break it a little bit, it doesn't stick out as, oh, this is really wrong. And now I'm just adding in some steam coming up from the ground level. Because I, I figured there would be a lot of industrial vents. And it just helps create this cool effect of, of smoke rising from the city. And here I was, I was trying to add a board, billboard to this building. I, I really wanted to get this in there, but it just, it wasn't working with its placement. Sometimes you'll have this where an idea that you really want to put into what you're working on just doesn't work and you have to cut it. Just adding in some more of that purple light and having some of it seep through edges there. And here I'm painting in a little grid on the side of the building here. And painting over it just to create this plating look. And 
and just going over it and then going back over with the base color of the building and adding some more highlights to that grating on the side there, the, the ramp. And you'll see me here using that straight line technique where I just create a really fast stroke to try and create a straight line. It worked out for the most part. Altogether, you can't really tell that some of them might not be perfectly straight. So that can work to your advantage if there's enough detail in an area. It can hide mistakes because your eye might not necessarily pick those up. And I wanted to add something to the space here. And one thing I, I really do need to work on is creating vehicles. I really do have a lot of issues with ships and, and uh, other things like that. For all this sci-fi stuff that I do, you'd think I'd be better at them, but it's, it's something that's a work in progress. And so for this, I, I tried something new. It's just taking the, the polygonal lasso tool and shaping out what could work as a ship shape. And just vaguely painting over it. Just trying to edge out kind of how I want it to be shaped. And by using the the uh, polygonal lasso, you can create solid shapes really easily. Whereas normally if I was just to brush this in, it would be really rough around the edges and I'd have to go back and clean it up anyways. So by just by using that, I can skip a step and save time. And that's another reason for the non-standard brushes, is they can help save you quite a bit of time in your work. Now, I'm keeping watch with the ship on my perspective. I want to be able to make sure you can see the bottom of it. And now I'm just going back over shaping, kind of how I, I want it to look. And taking a layer on color dodge and painting over top of it to create that, that bright engine look. You'll see this quite a bit in most sci-fi things. You just, some sort of ion engine or whatever, and an exhaust is always really bright. And generally it just looks pretty cool. I went in and I decided to add a couple more, just a, a few small ones. And adding the same engine highlight to them, going back over to my color dodge layer and adding that as well. And that really helps put in your head that this is some sort of futuristic city. And then I moved them below the layer I did with the, the blue brightness coming up from the bottom of the city. What that does is it helps pushes it back into the atmosphere and makes it look like it's far enough in the city that the, the light pollution from the city is affecting your view of it. Adding some more steam coming from the ground. Now I'm starting to add lighting to this building here. Because of the angle of it, I, I wanted to highlight the side that's facing towards the bright light. And it really helps make it go from this flat 2D silhouette to this 3D building very easily. And using the rotate tool can help you out if you need to draw at a certain angle that might be difficult otherwise for your hand. So I did that here, just so I can paint upside down on the part sticking out. Just like that, it already looks like there's a lot more depth to that particular piece. I'm playing around with the brushes. I, I wanted to add some sort of lighting of lights to the building, but it, it wasn't working the way I wanted it to. So I just added them to one little section. And then I added a couple bright lights to that point. You'll often see on taller buildings that 
you do have those red lights on top. And it, can, it can be a neat effect if you're doing some sort of city scene. Now I'm adding detail to the main building there. Just doing the same things I did with the foreground where I just drew lines and painted over the lines going horizontally, diagonally, you know. By drawing a ramp there it also shows that it comes out from the front of the building so it's not just this flat thing going all the way up. And just layering on detail. And now I'm using a technique that's generally pretty common but it can help you quite a bit. Uh, with adding detail, and that's just overlaying things from photos on top of it. And for this, I set it to soft light, which worked pretty well, and I'm adjusting the contrast. And then I bring it back on the opacity. So just by layering in this real photo with what you've painted, you can create interesting overlays. It really helps add a lot of detail in a short amount of time. And because I've mixed it together, it doesn't look like this thing that I added is much higher detail than the other things I've done. So it fits in with the rest of the piece. And that's something to keep in mind if you are using real photos, is the difference in detail between what you're painting and what's in the photo. So if you have more of a relaxed look to your painting, and you decide to use a real photo on it, you might have to do quite a bit of work to make that photo not stand out so much. Adding some straight lines to break up that detail, sliding them one on top of the other. And what I did is I mixed that photo layer down with what I was painting. And I'm coming in, adding some lights, and here I did actually add in the billboard that I was looking for, and it actually worked out this time by just adding this little bright light there. And then going back over top of it with a soft brush. I'm adding some more to that layer there, the, the layer with the lights, and just streaming some light up onto the buildings. Going back to what I was talking about with using pieces of a, a photo and just kind of stretching it to be unrecognizable, it's kind of what I'm doing here. Just taking that section of buildings, squashing it down, stretching it out, and because it was already bigger and I shrunk it down, I don't really lose any quality by stretching it out. Whereas if you do have a smaller image, you do have to be careful with stretching it out too much as it, it will lose quite a bit of quality and become pixelated. I'm just playing around with this, trying to figure out how I want this building to be detailed. Since there's a lot more light on it, it's going to have a lot more showing. And what I kind of figured out is to have the light shining up on sections of it. And you'll find that this is a recurring theme throughout most of the painting. And that's something you can kind of incorporate into your work is repeating patterns to bring a theme together. It's also a great way to show scale in a piece. So if you have an object, let's say uh, a pole or something that's up close, and then you want it again and again, as it goes into the distance, it gets smaller. It just helps show the viewer how things are receding. Going over top with a star brush and setting up the color dyna dynamics and the spacing a bit smaller to generate really nice looking building lights. Just playing around with adding some more of that light shining up onto the buildings. Then grabbing another section of building. You'll see I'm just doing this very quickly, stretching it out, trying to play around with it, see what sticks. Kind of liked it on the side of building there, but I wasn't totally sure, and I did end up painting over it quite a bit. So I'm going here through the second building a little bit more quickly. When I'm painting onto the buildings, I'm not really thinking about how each part of the building represents something. I'm more adding detail 
just to kind of represent something that could be there. Because I could sit here for hours and try to decide, okay, this section of the building is for residents, this section is a business section, and we have this stuff sticking out. So you can just kind of ignore all that and maybe just paint some detail on there, some abstract detail. And by doing that, you just create a look to whatever you're painting that can just fit in with what you're doing. And I just took a section from building again there, and you see I, I squeezed it down and set it onto the front. And I figured that this section could be, maybe there's an entrance there. Adding some more little details, some sections popping out. So I didn't want it to just be this flat building rising up, grabbing that same pattern. And this time I'm duplicating it and moving it, stretching it around, seeing what sticks. I kind of liked how it sat on the side of the building there. And by setting by setting it to soft light and adjusting the opacity, I can have this nice texture there without really overdoing it. Again, grabbing some mice from a building, setting them to color dodge, and adjusting them with curves. And you can bring up curves with Control M. Slaring in detail, throwing quick lines on to create that straight look. And again, I'm just trying to add little light hits to parts of the buildings that I might think would be lit up more. So that chimney looking thing sticking out stuff would be picking up some of the brighter lights from the background. And the rooftop would be picking up some of the blue from the sky. Again, just going over adding some lights onto the buildings. Generally in a night scene you are going to want to have some lights on just to show that th there are people in the city living in these buildings or working there, whichever. And I, I wanted it to be brighter in that little section because I imagine there would be lots of people coming in through there. Adding another little boat billboard now I'm moving on to these background buildings. And because these are a bit farther away, they don't need quite as much detail. Especially at night, as they're going to lose quite a bit of that. So for these, these uh, more normal looking buildings, I decided to just highlight the different faces. And by doing that with just one long stroke, you can create these sections that look like they rise out from each other, whereas before it was just one solid piece. And already you can see that maybe this one section sticks out the most, and then the other sections are more receded from it. Adding some bright little hits from lighter sources. And I, I figure that this would probably be more of a white building, which do pick up quite a bit more light. And that's something else to think about when you are doing a scene is that colors won't be uniform. Even in a scene, say, with grass and foliage, we have a ton of different plant colors. There's light yellows and dark greens and all sorts of things in there. So by adding variety to your color palette, but keeping within reason to the rest of your piece, you can create some nice realism that there is a lot of variety in whatever you're painting. Bring up the quick mask with Q, and then painting over the building and just using curves to darken down the bottom half of the building since it would not be picking up very much light. I'm not exactly sure what's causing the light sources, but I, I wanted that to play into the piece with the buildings picking up uh, the effect from it. Again, doing the same thing to the other buildings here. Just painting the faces towards the light source, darkening it down towards the bottom. And you notice it was just one or two little strokes on each face there. Just by doing that, it gives the illusion that there are three faces on that, that left building. Painting the building here. And I, I used some blue to paint the inside of the building up there, picking up some light from the back of the city, since there is quite a lot of light being thrown around in city scenes. I'm going back over to 
this other middle building here. Just trying to figure out how I want it to look. And that's something with a lot of these buildings is I'm just kind of experimenting with ideas. Is I, I really have no idea, at least for almost all of them, that how they'll look in the end. I'm just, you know, throwing down lines, watching my perspective, and just trying to see what looks neat. And I found that using these diagonal angles looks really cool on the building there. And that's something else I incorporated into other sections of the piece, which you'll see in a little bit. I'm trying to figure out where the light's hitting. And because this is closer to the other side, I figured that it would be picking up some of that light as well. And playing with textures. And that all the textures I use stuck. You know, sometimes they just they didn't work, so I would get rid of them. You know, just because you've taken a texture into your into your uh, piece, it doesn't necessarily have to be used. I finally figured something out, creating a similar effect to what I did on the left. Then this second texture just didn't fit. Just playing around with the curves, trying to try different blending modes. Now, here's something that repeated throughout the piece using the little light sources. This is where I mentioned using a repeating pattern can uh, help draw together a theme. So by adding those little lights, uh, those little lights streaming up, it, it ties it in with the buildings towards the foreground. It also looks really neat. Sampling off here. And you can sample really easily by holding Alt when you have the brush selected. And this just helps keep you from having to go over to your color box and click on that and sample off your piece and close it and go back to work. Now when you're working you, you do want to keep in mind you know, little hotkeys to speed along your workflow and you can view what a hotkey is by just hovering over the tool on the left. And again I'm trying to get that billboard in there, trying a different approach to it. Because I, I really liked the idea of it, but it just it didn't work for its placement in this piece. So I'm just trying out different other things, uh, cutting out pieces of the building to create a different shape. Then I just started trying to paint onto it, see if I could get anything interesting to appear. Here's where I tied in that same diagonal pat pattern from the last building that I used. Carving down a little bit in the top. And it, it ended up creating this nice effect on the building and it ties it in with the rest of the piece. Just throwing detail on there. By layering lines and then sampling the building, painting back over the lines so you can create some interesting effects. And again I just took part of a building, set it to soft light, stretched it out, and in this case I need to adjust it with the perspective. It, it didn't fit quite as well as I needed to. So I took the marquee tool and just adjusted it down to match better. That's something you do need to watch out for when you are using photos is do they match your perspective and if not you may need to do some work to adjust them. Again adding some lights on there. And I want this building to be really lit up. That's kind of how I compromise between the billboard just by adding a lot of bright building lights onto it kind of make it stand out. Now moving on to the main building in the background and I was kind of I was kind of intimidated by how to approach this because it is such a large object and it will have a lot of sections to it. So I kind of just started small adding little lights and just to kind of determine how things should sit. And it really gave a good starting place. So if you're not sure to how to approach something always, you can just kind of start small and slowly build up to it. And here I am, I'm painting on little lines on the left and then continuing that to the side here. Using the same diagonals I used in the other two buildings, I was able to start building the rest of the piece. That's something that can also happen when you're working on pieces is 
you'll find a theme or style that works really well and you can use that in a lot of things that you weren't totally sure how to do before. I didn't keep it exactly the same. I wanted to have these large plates on the building and then detail on top of those. I erased some more down on, into the main structure and I added some little walkways going between just to create something cool to break up the big metal space. Here I'm creating this little great, this, uh, great section. You can create the illusion of grades really easily by alternating between highlights and shadows. Rotating to create those nice straight lines that I needed. And there was what I was talking about, the grading. You can just switch between the two. And it really makes it stand out a lot better. And I'm trying to figure out the base, just throwing some things down there. Because the base was so hidden, I didn't have to worry too much about the detail that was down there. Here I am grabbing part of a building again, squashing it down. Trying to figure out how I could incorporate this into it. Just to help draw it in with the, the rest of the buildings. And I finally figured out something that I could do. Just taking those two pieces and then flipping them just having them in the little section there adds a nice little bit of detail. Coming back down to the base, just alternating with lights and darks down there, creating the same grading look. But this time I'm going horizontal, so maybe it has this big base there, and then it rises up into the main building, adding some lights there. And you can do this really easily by just kind of drawing a line and then taking a soft brush and going over that it just helps create this effect that it is lit and I'm, I'm coming back in with the adjustment layers just to add some final lighting things so generally I'll have a curves layer to kind of darken down the darker sections and then I'll have a separate curves or levels layer to brighten up the middle or sections that I want highlighted what this does is it, it just helps draw your eye into what you want the viewer to look at. That's the great thing about using those adjustment layers. And you can do that at the end or throughout the piece you're working on. It will just allow you to focus more on what you want the viewer to see. So that just about does it for this tutorial. I hope it was helpful for you. Like, favorite, subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching.